inequality. And I think you answer that in the negative when you say that in the schools that you would establish for the previously underprivileged or the underprivileged would include schools for children, not just Negroes, but Puerto Ricans and other underprivileged persons. Am I correct in that assumption? Yes, I think you're right there. We, I would not uh, limit our employment demands to Negroes. I would include Puerto Ricans and other minorities throughout our country, which have been similarly discriminated against, though not for so long a period of time as Negroes. Puerto, Puerto Ricans weren't enslaved. Slave. Yeah, this is a problem that stems from slavery. Now, and this compensation, yes, sir, this compensation is coming to people who were enslaved by the white man for 400 years. The Puerto Ricans don't even fit into this picture. Well, they do fit into it. No, they the, do fit into the problem it. is the Negro problem. They're not lynching ne uh, Puerto Ricans. If a dark-skinned Puerto Rican went down to Mississippi, he as long probably as he would be lynched too. If he Spanish, he would no. be lynched. No, they don't it's ask It's the Negro him. here, and as long as he speaks Spanish or some other language, or if he ties his head up with a, with a turban or something, he can go anywhere in Mississippi or in your own. ...of other people, because see, nothing makes me angrier when we talk about our civil rights and what we've missed, that here comes the Asians in to join us, here comes the Latinos in talking about their civil rights, here comes white women in talking about theirs, the Mexicans, all of these people. And I don't know, it's some of you are very, very young, but in my experience growing up in Tulsa, Oklahoma, I never knew that anybody who was sent to the back of the bus because she was a white woman. Nobody was sent to the back of the bus because they were homosexual. Nobody was sent to the back of the bus because they were Asian and Latin. They were sent to the back of the bus because their faces were black. And now all of these groups are wanting to come in now and take the things that owe us. And some of our leaders stand up there and say, oh, we're all one. We should include everyone that's going in. Every time I hear them do that, I just want to pick up a sock, a shoe, or something and throw it at the television. See, this is why I'm not mistaken by these leaders. See, anytime, first of all, you can't lead me when you call an organization rainbow because there's no black in a rainbow. Minister, um, we've talked about many topics. Let, let's, now, let's now discuss your seven-point plan. And, and, and is it realistic? I mean, one of the things that you're talking about is uh, paying African Americans for slavery. Yes, now, President of the United States, how many presidents did it take to apologize for slavery? You have to know that that's not realistic. Reparations well, that it won't happen. Well, sir, the Japanese were paid were paid reparations. The people who are called Jews were paid reparations. Uh, some of our brothers and sisters of the indigenous people who are called by the white man Indians, some of our brothers and sisters were paid reparations. And we can never say that it is unrealistic. It is a goal, it is a platform, it is a just demand against our oppressors and those who indeed owe us to repair the damage. So because you feel that it is unrealistic is not reason enough that the youth would take it from the seven point program of action.